back with Michael Volpe here on America Trends, um, talking about um, a, a, an office that's supposed to help whistleblowers instead allegedly made a hit list of whistleblowers, uh, the Veterans Affairs Department, uh, Veterans Affairs. Um, and, and you also, you, you work on court cases where you try to fo uh, follow things that are happening in foster care. You have a lot of stories you're following, Michael, um, of, of parents who've had their children ripped away from them, and a lot of people will say that is completely without cause in some of these. Police corruption, nonprofit securities, political corruption. We might have time for a few more of those, and I know we're going to talk about the younger case out of Texas. But first, can you recap just what's going on with this VA whistleblower's <laughs> office? It's, it's a mess. You know what was interesting was several of the Congress people during the hearing said the office needs to get back to. The office was created in 2017. They're acting like it's been around for 50 years and 30 years ago was working just fine. Get back to what? Uh, it, the, the original executive director that was the head of the office is guy, Peter O'Rourke, who people should know was a political operative who was placed in this position. Really, he created an office with no rules where he, on at least two occasions, he retaliated against whistleblowers. And it's a... There's a couple of other things. They don't even have written rules yet for how you follow up, follow through well, on investigations. He retaliated, so, Michael, but I have to ask, was this found, was, was he uh, charged with anything? Did he get in trouble at work? Or was this just an allegation that, that happened from a few people that convinced you? No, this is what the VA Office of Inspe the report said. So the report he, said he did it. You know, okay. The report said he retaliated against two people. He has, he went from being the head of OAWP to being a, 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 the chief of staff at the VA to eventually being the acting secretary of the VA, again, a political operative, and then he was eventually removed. But no, the report said that twice he retaliated against whistleblowers. The report was absolutely brutal to this guy that, that he created an office with no rules. Anybody could do anything. Huh. Well, has anything been cleaned up in your estimation? No, not in the office, not in the VA, and there were 22 recommendations made, and after the report came out, that was late last week, there was a lot of news on it, and the VA statements were worse the effect of that, we're, that we've already followed through on the recommendations. Well, as it turns out, there were 22 recommendations. The, v, the, the OAWP head, the, that woman Tammy Bonzano, said she's following through on 10, when the, the head of OIG testified, he said she's presented a framework. So really they've done very little. Look, if you get 10 out of 22 on a school test, you're failing. So mm -hmm. that's where the office is right now. <laughs> yeah, we have to do better. So what about what were the recommendations and, and what, what's going to happen next? I, I, you'd have to read them, but the, rec the recommendations almost sound silly. It's things like create uh, rules of the road, create uh, create training programs. They didn't have good training programs. It's things, when you're reading them, you're, you're thinking, these are things that are supposed to already be done. But essentially, you create a way to, to run the office. It was 22 recommendations like that. Michael, just to, do you have anything on the top of, just the, the tip of your tongue, that some of these things they're trying to blow the whistle on, some things that could help our veterans, some things that would probably break our heart, um, that, that, that points out just why this is such an important issue and why you keep on it? Whistleblowers blow the whistle on all sorts of things. Everything from fraud, time stolen, on equipment that's not being kept clean, the, uh, the backlogs were, were, were a group of whistleblowers that started in the Phoenix VA, and it turned out that they had these, these secret wait lists everywhere. Yeah, that was but the huge I, story, and that actually made the mainstream media for some time. And President Trump has promised to focus on the VA. He's done a lot, but there's still a lot that's falling through the cracks, and it needs to not fall off the front pages, right? Well, yeah, though I think that's hard. But, look, he, he's, he made this law, VA Accountability Act, the centerpiece of of his va reform policy va oawp was supposed to be the centerpiece of that so far it's a failure the media took it out on him mother jones pro publica but even washington post and more the mainstream they they said his they mentioned him in the same breath i don't like to editorialize that much but they're right hmm. he made this office the centerpiece the office is not functioning which means that his va reforms are not functioning and there's no other way to say it
just because you look into this so much more than other people do, um, you've you've had just this great time to focus on it. You know, most newspapers, media outlets, they've taken away their investigative department. So it's people like you that tell us things like my question is, do we have just too many junk layers of bureaucracy within the VA? Too many junk layers of bureaucracy, probably too many hospitals. It's a massive, huge agency, in my opinion. No one can manage it. But as I told you the last time I was here, I don't think that this, the, this, the VA has ever functioned properly. It was one of the three scandals under the Harding administration when it was created. And I think it's always been roughly like this. 2014 brought it out to the surface, but I don't think it's ever really functioned properly. Talk a, lot about of crony, a lot of cronyism as well. <laughs> Something else got to drain that swamp. Um, talking about a hit list, alleged hit list on the whistleblowers within the Veterans Affairs Department. Mike Volpe's been looking into it. You can follow him at, at Mike Volpe on Twitter. You are with America Trends. Anything else on that before we turn, Mike, to the younger case of Texas, a case where a court ruled a mother can go ahead and give a seven-year-old a gender reassignment procedure? Seven years old. Correct. But it's not even what she ruled. She ruled that the mother should have custody, and as a result, the mother should have medical decision power solely. And, and so that's what happened. But here's what I wanted to say. People have turned this into a cultural issue, like this is where transgenderism goes. In my opinion, this is another example of the lawlessness of family courts. That people say this is child abuse. The story I've been following, the rookie case, there's a father who stuck a gun to his kid's head. He chased after another daughter until she had to barricade herself in her house. According to another police report, he ripped the organ off an organ, a organ leg off an organ and choked his then wife with it. And he has sole custody. And he has sole custody based on a custody trial where the woman, Sandra Gazzini Rucky, her, her lawyer was forced to conduct part of it strapped to a wheelchair. So what you're seeing in the younger case is one example of lawlessness all throughout the country and family court and frankly all throughout the world. And that's what people should understand. The reason that's happening is because judges have so much power and leeway in family court, they can just decide these things. Boy, and this just came down. This is out of Dallas, Texas, James Younger. Um, the, the seven-year-old, his little boy James, his mother wanted him to undergo gender transition against his father's wishes. The mother is a doctor. Is she a medical doctor? Some sort of a doctor. Yeah, some sort but, of doctor. Transitioning right, from James into Luna. And uh, right. there's a custody battle over James and his twin, June. Um, so, I mean, what's next with this? Anything or just, just well, what happened the was gender reassignment? No, what happened was the media got a hold of it. It was actually a jury, and people say juries are panacea. A jury validated the judge's, the judge's name, by the way, is Kim Hooks, uh, the judge's decision, and then the media took off with it. It was all over social media. I saw Donald Trump Jr. tweet about it, Rand Paul, uh, Ted Cruz, and suddenly the judge reversed the, the, uh, the jury's decision, and while the mother still has physical custody, they both have medical rights, so he can block her from having this gen for now, but she also gave a gag order, so he can't talk to the media anymore. So block for now, but something could happen down the road. Mike Volpe, I know you'll keep us updated.